What's up everybody, David here and welcome back to episode 3 of Sonar Tips and Tricks. So today I have another 5 for you and you know what, let's not waste any time, let's just get right into it. So this tip is really going to help you guys if you ever want to remix a song, a song that you've already mixed before. So obviously if you use stems to mix a song, you could always get a new session, import the stems. But the problem with that is if you've already went through and organized and color coded all your tracks, uh, it can be very time consuming to do that. So no one wants to do it again if you ever go back to remix it. So all we want to do is just get rid of the plugins and the volume, panning, sends, automation, all that good stuff. Now, when I used to do this, I would delete every single plugin and reset every, every volume and automation, and it sucked until I found this. So from Sonar X3 up, it has something called Mix Scenes and Mix Recall, and this allows you to have multiple mixes inside of one session. Now, up here in the control bar, you should have a module labeled Mix Recall. If you don't, click in any empty space and make sure you have it selected. But inside this module, there's a drop down in which it says Reset Mix. And once you click on that, it does exactly what I told you it was going to do. It's going to delete all the envelopes, all the effects, all the volume, automation, everything. But it's going to leave your organization. It's going to leave your color coding and your labels and your track setup. So are you sure you wish to proceed? Yes. So once you hit that yes, it's going to kind of do its magic. And now once you click on the tracks, all of the plugins are gone. If we go to the console window, all of the plugins are gone. It'll still leave whatever buses you have set up, I believe, but all the plugins, everything in the effects bin, all the volume, everything is gone, but your tracks and your organization is still there. So now you can remix the song from the ground up. Now one of the changes you might have noticed in Sonar Platinum is that you can no longer have multiple plugins open at the same time. This is a new feature called Recycle Plugin Window and all that means is if you already have a window open with a plugin, instead of making a new one when you click on a different plugin, it just reuses that current window. So if you hate this in every way, shape or form, you can actually completely turn it off. So if we go up to Edit, Preferences and then VST Settings uncheck recycle plugin windows and this will now allow you to have multiple plugins open at the exact same time. Now me, I actually kind of like this feature because it keeps things from being cluttered because for me at least, if I click on this plugin and then I then click on this amp, that most likely means I'm done using this most of the time. So what we're going to do now is actually turn it back on and I'll show you a way to have multiple plugins open at the same time but on a case by case basis. So let's say for example, I'm using this Loud Max and I now want to open the guitar amp. Obviously it's going to switch. So what we're going to do on the Loud Max is click on this pin and that will lock it to this window and keep it open no matter what other plugins I decide to use. And then once you're done with them, you just close it out and then when you open it back up you'll have to repin it. But that allows you to have multiple plugins only when you need them. So here I have a vocal track we're going to be working with. Here's what it sounds like by itself. This is your last chance to give up your humanity and be- So what I'm trying to do with this is I want to double the vocals so it's panned left and right in full stereo. Now, I know there's a lot of plugins that do this. I know the very popular one is a Waves Doubler, but I don't feel like buying that. And come to think of it, I never looked for a free one, but I guess whatever. This whole time, there's actually been one in Sonar ever since Sonar X1. And I'm going to show you how that works today. So let's go to add in a plugin. And I'm not sure where it's going to be located on yours, but mine is located in Spatial and Panner. So this one is called Channel Tools. And uh, there's a preset in here actually called Increased Width. And this is doing exactly what I want it to do, which is pan a uh, mono vocal track left and right so it plays in stereo. This is what that sounds like. This is your last chance to give up your humanity! And you can even use these left to right uh, knobs over here to control how far left and how far right the panning actually is. Uh, I haven't looked into what else this plugin does yet. I just got really excited when I found the panning feature. So yeah, it's a cool little tip for you guys. You don't have to buy or download any extra plugins to do this. So this tip can really make a huge impact on the efficiency and the speed of your workflow. We're going to be taking a look at the plugin layout. So when you go to add a plugin, you'll see this bar up here at the top that says plugin layouts. This is basically asking you, how do you want Sonar to sort your plugins? Right now I have it sorted by type, so it'll sort it by the actual file type of the plugin. So VST3, 2, DirectX, etc. if you have other ones. 
You also can sort it by manufacturer, which is just categories by who makes the plugin. So if you have multiple Joey Sturgis plugins, for example, they'll all be in one folder. Then you can also sort it by category, which is my personal favorite, because it sorts the plugins based on what they do. So you have your delay, your distortion, your dynamics, and it's just the fastest way to get to them, in my opinion. Now a couple problems that you can run into doing it this way is that sometimes it'll double up a plugin. So I have the VST3 and the 2 version of this virtual mix rack. And then on top of that, sometimes Sonar does not know how to sort some of the plugins. So you get this huge uncategorized folder, which if you're in a mix and you have a lot of plugins that are in this folder, it can take a while to scroll through and get to what you're looking for, which can really hinder your workflow. So the way we fix this is to go into the plugin layouts and hit manage layouts. This is going to open a window that allows you to manually sort and organize your plugins based on however you want it. So if we open the uncategorized folder, for example, I know that gain reduction is a compressor or dynamic uh, type of plugin. So we're going to take that, we're going to drag it up to dynamics. You can put as many plugins in a folder as you want. You can do this as many times as you need. So one more time, we have Epic Verb, which is obviously a reverb. We're going to drag that to the reverb plugin. You're also able to add subfolders as well as add a whole entire new folder and name it whatever you want. Now, once you're done with your custom layout, you can go up to the top right corner and save it. But obviously, I'm not going to do that because I already have my own. Or you're also able to open a pre-existing layout that you've already made. So for example, this is how I've sorted and streamlined my plugin layout. So we're going to go over to David Custom. And as you can see, there's no uncategorized folder. They're all where they should be. And I even made a new Amp Sims folder that holds all of my Amp Simulators. And in the EQ folder, I also have a subfolder for the Waves Q because there's like 3 billion of these plugins. And up here back at the channel strip, there was only one instance of Virtual Mix Rack, where before there was two. So spending the time to organize your plugins like this can make a huge, huge difference in your workflow and overall just make you more efficient in your recording and mixing. Because after all, time is money. Screen sets is a feature inside of Sonar that allows you to have multiple and customizable window configurations within your project. I know that's crazy confusing, let me show you exactly what I mean. So when I'm recording and mixing, most of the time this is my window setup. I have my inspector on the left, and then probably 80% of my screen is dedicated to the tracks themselves. So let's say I want to do a little bit of mixing. I might have a different setup for that, so that's where screen sets come in. Up here in the control bar, you have your module for the screen sets, and of course if you don't see it, make sure to make it visible by right clicking in any empty space and selecting screen set under the modules. Or you can go up to views and then screen sets at the bottom. But let's say I want to mix and I want a different setup. We're going to go up to screen sets and then we're going to select console slash timeline for example. This will set it up so that I have my tracks in the top half and my console in the bottom half so I can make changes to faders and panning all from one screen while scrolling through all of my tracks. So let's say I want to do a little bit of editing. Let's go back up to the screen sets and select auto track zoom. This is going to set up the screen so that anytime I click on a track, it'll automatically expand it, which could be great for editing or whatever works for you. All of these screen sets are completely customizable. So let's say you're in this track zoom uh, uh, screen set and you decide I want to see the browser all the time. We're going to go up to view, select the browser, and then the way you save this screen set is just by clicking on a different one. It will auto save every time you leave. So we'll click on the first one, back to my normal screen set, and then back to the auto zoom, and you'll see that the browser has stayed there and Sonar has saved your preferred configuration. Within the screen set menu, you're able to rename the screen sets, you're able to lock them so that if you make changes and you go to another screen set, it will not save them, or you're also able to revert back to the configuration before the current one, as well as duplicating them. This can be very useful when doing different things in the DAW. So if I'm maybe editing, I might want to use the auto track zoom. If I'm uh, just recording, I might want to go to my main screen set. And if I'm mixing, I might want to be in my console timeline. Whatever works for you, but it's an easy, easy way to switch back and forth. Now to take this even a step further, you can do this with keyboard shortcuts. So if you notice when you click on this, each screen set has a number next to it. That is the keyboard shortcut to switch back and forth. And I must specify here, this does not work for the 10 key. 
the 10 key is automatically designated for the nudge feature. The number shortcuts for the screen sets are going to be the row of numbers above the letters on your keyboard. It is not the 10 key. Those do something completely different. This is another one of those settings that can really speed up your workflow. So make sure to take some time and check it out and see if it helps you. And that's going to be it for today, guys. I really hope you guys learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if there's stuff that you think everybody should know and you think that I should include in future videos, let me know down in the comments. I definitely love to check it out and I might put it in a later video. Now, of course, do not forget to like and subscribe. There's new videos every single week and you don't want to miss any content. And as always, thank you so much for watching. My name is David and I'll see you next time.